everybody welcome back to my channel if you are new here i'm lauren in today's video i'm going to be reviewing three handbags that i get asked about quite often and they're also three handbags i picked up relatively recently it just is so funny that it happened that way but i think that the one that i've had the longest i've had since october um so like i said relatively new and i want to be really concise with these reviews because i feel like i can be very chatty it's a teacher in me i just feel like i could talk forever but I'm gonna try and keep these to about two to three minutes for each review. I'll give the pros, the cons, and kind of my final take on the handbag. Um, I will also say that these handbags vary in price. I am in Canada, so I think the most affordable one is about $1,000 and it ranges to about $3,500 without tax. So they can be fairly expensive. If you're new to my channel and you don't know this about me, I love handbags in general. It really doesn't matter on the brand. I love a lot of contemporary handbags. I have a lot of contemporary handbags as well. I know the state of our economy. I know inflation, everything's increasing in prices. So um, just so you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a really good quality handbag. And I feel like the ones I'm showing you today aren't representative of my collection. I have a lot of different contemporary brands and I really do love Coach. I'm working with Coach on this part of the video, but if you know me, then you know that I love Coach. I have two Coach handbags. I bought my mom three Coach handbags. I'm very well aware with the quality of coach and I do love the brand and they have a really cool new campaign that's called find your courage. It follows Emma, which if you don't know Emma, definitely go and check out her Instagram. She's been around for a while. It's um, Japan's first virtual model and it follows her through all these sort of virtual worlds where she finds the courage to be real. It features a lot of celebrities. So there's little Nas X, there's Camila Mendez, there's uh, Koki, there is, um, I'm trying to remember, I have it down below. Let me, so I don't forget people. Ooh, Wu Jin Yen. So there's uh, so many different um, artists, celebrities, actresses, and basically they're all in these different worlds and they're showing her how to find her courage in different ways and how to evolve and just be confident in self-expression. It's a really cool campaign. There are four handbags that I particularly like, three of them, obviously are tabbies. Like I said, I have two tabby handbags myself, but so many of you were in my DMs asking me what I thought about the new quilted tabby when it first came out. So many of you, I love it. So one in particular that I really like, I think is the tabby 26. I'll put aside, like I'll show you on the screen, is the tabby 26 in the denim, in the black denim with the silver um, padlock closure. Ooh, it's so beautiful. You know me, you know I love a black handbag with silver hardware. I just think it's so stunning. The 26 isn't too big and it isn't too small. The black one that I like is currently sold out, but it is gorgeous. The other quilted tabby that I love is also the 26 with the quilting. It's all leather. I really love the silver and buff color. I'm not one to usually go towards a lot of beige handbags or sort of that peachier tone, but I love it with the silver and I love that the padlock is the same color as the leather that's similar to the pillow tabby that I have. They also have it in the silver and the soft purple, which looks like my pillow tabby. It is just so stunning. And the 26, like I said, I feel like it's a pretty perfect size. You can wear it on the shoulder, but you can also wear a crossbody. Um, it just, it's a really versatile piece. And for the price point, I think it's really affordable. And then the other one that probably is my favorite because I love a good mini bag is the Tabby Shoulder 20 with the quilting. And I love the light antique nickel moss colorway. I think that is perfect for the springtime, but again, you can wear it in summer, you can wear it in fall. I think that that green, that moss green color is just so luxe and it just looks really expensive. Um, and again, the padlock is the same color as the leather. If you want more of the fun color, the pink is also cute, the vivid pink. Oh, I love the tabby. I think this last one might be my favorite. It is the mirror shoulder bag, and again, in quilted leather. The reason why I love this one so much is because it has black hardware. So it's black quilted leather, black hardware, very minimal. I think the only branding that you're gonna see is on the closure, the zipper closure. It has that little sort of C padlock. But other than that, it's just black leather, black hardware, gorgeous. Mm, it's so beautiful. And I think the price point of it, 550 Canadian, 
Again, you don't have to spend a lot to get a luxury heritage handbag. That, I, that's all I have to say, is that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a good quality handbag. So, let's get into these speed reviews because I've already been chatting so much, but the handbag that I probably get asked most about, and it's probably because I've had it the longest, is this one here. And this is the JW Anderson Corner Bag. Um, like I said, I've had this one since October. I originally compared this to the bucket bag, or sorry, the, the bucket bag, the Le Weve Puzzle Bag. JW Anderson, if you didn't know, he is the creative director at Le Weve, and he has his own brand, obviously, but I thought that the size of this was really um, comparable, and I feel like the shape, because you can wear it slouchy like that, it kind of slouches like my puzzle bag. I do like it. It slouches more when you carry it sort of by the top handle like that, as opposed to when you wear it as a crossbody. I love the look of it. I know a lot of people had asked me about this hardware here and if it's heavy. It's not heavy at all. I don't think that this is real metal. I think this is just plastic, um, but it looks like metal. It's not heavy at all. And people are asking if there's scratches. I honestly don't see any scratches with it. Um, they're also asking if the leather um, gets scratched easily. No, you can see that you'll see some lines and the natural grain of the leather that just sort of happens because it is leather. But there's not any scratches that I can see. Even though it is a very smooth leather, you can see the bottom. Um, I don't think there's any scratches. Again, just the natural grain. When I wear my jacket, this rubs up against it. You can see it's, it's not a very delicate leather even though it is smooth. Uh, this one is gold hardware. I think that the gold on this matches really well and because this is really the only hardware that there is, I'm okay with it being gold. Um, but I really do like this handbag. Uh, one of the cons I would say is that some people are saying that it's a little bit harder to get into. Um, I don't think it's harder to get into when you're carrying it sort of by hand, but when you have it crossbody, it might be a little bit tricky especially if it's full but i'm not scratching myself like the zipper doesn't scratch me or anything like that this is kind of a black hole that's what i would say um because it's black on the inside and the opening isn't the biggest like you can see how it doesn't open up super wide things can kind of get lost in there other than that i think it's a really great handbag i like it the only other thing that i wish they didn't do is that the crossbody strap, you can see it's not on center, so where the seam is right there. So it kind of tips down a little bit when you wear it. You can kind of see how it goes there. I wish that the strap was in the center. It's not a deal breaker at all. Um, I do like how the strap is adjustable and the strap is also removable too. Um, so that's also a nice aspect of it. But overall, I would say that this is a really good handbag for the price. Uh, like I said, this one is about $1,000. No regrets with this. Would highly recommend it if you are looking at the Loewe puzzle bag, but you do want something that is more affordable because the puzzle now is super expensive. Next up, we have my Loewe. I always forget the name. I believe it's called the Bracelet Shoulder Bag. This was the Christmas present to myself this year. I love this handbag. I love it because it's large enough where I can carry more than say even this handbag here, but it's not too big. So if you know I have the Louis Vuitton Speedy B25, I don't use that one because I feel like it's too big and bulky. Whereas this duffel bag, because it's kind of smushy, I feel like it's a really good size. Um, I also really like the strap. I know you either love or hate these straps. For me, I feel like this really fits in with my style and my wardrobe, but I also have the Loewe puzzle with the black, or sorry, the black strap and the silver hardware so I can switch it out. So I have that ability to do that. Um, I would say that, whew, I love it. There's no regrets at all getting this. Would I recommend it? Probably not, which is funny because I love it. Um, because it is more of a delicate leather, it is lambskin, as you can sort of see. Is it lambskin or calfskin? I can't remember, it's really delicate. So as you can see, there's like a little mark there. I tend to find that if I rub my finger for a little bit, it makes it go away, but that one, I don't know, maybe that one's just there. But because this is really smooth leather, 
you are going to be prone to getting little nicks and scratches and if that bothers you and typically would bother me but i'm okay with it for this um, I wouldn't recommend it um, as well. If you like a lot of structure ha structure to your handbag, this isn't the one for you. For me, I love it because it's smushy. I do put in my Loewe or my Loewe, my Lululemon Go Getter pouch in the larger size to give it some structure. But um, just know that it's a pretty smushy handbag. But I love that about it. Um, it is fairly expensive. Um, this is the one that's about thirty three hundred, I think, or so. Canadian and then you you know tax you have to add on to that depending on where you live, but I love it um, so For me it works with my lifestyle and It works with my wardrobe, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for anybody I'd recommend the puzzle bag hundred percent. I'd recommend this one a hundred percent but for I think the average person unless you really love this style you don't need this um, it's like I said, it's delicate. It has a very unique aesthetic to it. You either love it or you hate it. I personally love it. And then the last handbag is this one here, which is my most recent addition. This was on my wish list and I managed to get it. This is the Ferragamo Charming Tote. I got mine in the small size with the black leather and then this, um, I think it's cotton or linen canvas but uh, I love this tote. It looks pretty small. Like I said, this is a smaller size. Um, pros to this handbag, it's really light, um, even though it has that leather and it has that sort of suede interior. It is really light. Other pros to it, I feel like it's different from a lot of other tote bags that you sort of see around. It's got this kind of cool shape to it that I talked about. The other cool part that I really like about it is that you can change the shape with this sort of strap on the inside. So now you have a whole different style, which I really like. So um, I think it's a really nice handbag. I would recommend it. If I could go back, I might get the bigger one. Um, even though this fits all my essentials, when you fill this up, so putting it on, you don't need to use two hands to put it on. It fits over your shoulder pretty easily, as you can kind of see. Um, however, what I have found is that when I fill it up, it is a little bit harder to put on because it stretches this out. And so the strap drop gets a tiny bit shorter depending on how much you put in. So the larger size I know has a bigger strap drop. Um, I just wish this, if this strap drop was a tiny bit longer, I'd probably love it in this size because honestly, I don't carry a lot with me. Would I still recommend it? Yes. 100%. I think the price point of this is pretty good. This one I believe is around 1800 Canadian, which is still pretty expensive for a tote bag. Um, the leather version is only about $100 more if you want to go that route, but I do love it. I think the quality of Ferragamo is really good. Um, I've used this now about five times, I would say, and the wear is really good so far. It keeps its shape if that's something that you like. So when the handles sit up like that and they don't flop over and it keeps its shape, then this is definitely one. It's not floppy like the Goyard or the Neverfull, so that's kind of a pro. And if you want to wear it different ways, I just find that this is like a classier looking tote than say even my Goyard tote, which is very casual, my St. Louis tote. I find that this one um, sort of, because of the detail and because of the design, it's a little bit more of like a classy type of tote that you could wear to work. Um, if you work in an environment that just requires you to dress up a little bit more, but um, other than that, that's the only con I can think of is the strap drop. Um, that's it. I really do like this handbag. I think overall I'm really happy with it. Um, I do like that it's fairly minimal and I don't see it around Vancouver at all, maybe because it's also brand new. But would highly recommend this, whether you get the all leather version, but I really like this version with the canvas there. So hopefully these reviews helped you some way, somehow. If you have any more questions, please leave them down below. Again, go and check out Coach and check out their latest campaign, Find Your Courage, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!